As part of proof of concept number one, we investigated the delivery versus payment use case. The delivery versus payment transaction demonstrated stems from an over-the-counter trade and is settled bilaterally on the SDX platform. The cash leg and the asset leg settle atomically and instantly, eliminating replacement cost risk and the need for a central counterparty. The tokenized assets that we use for demonstration purposes is a digital bond, and the cash leg is settled in wholesale CBDC. On the SDX platform, we have the nodes of Bank 1, Bank 2, and the Notary node. To initiate a bilaterally agreed delivery versus payment transaction, Bank 1, which is the seller of tokenized assets, enters a delivery versus payment instruction into the SDX system. Bank 2 is the buyer of the tokenized assets and enters a receive versus payment instruction. If the instructions match, reservation requests are automatically triggered for tokenized assets and wholesale CBDC. Upon the successful blocking of tokenized assets with Bank 1 and wholesale CBDC with Bank 2, the reservation is confirmed by the system. Throughout the whole transaction, the notary node checks whether state changes to the ledger concern an old state. In particular, it checks whether credits and debits of tokenized assets and wholesale CBDC of the transaction haven't been spent already. If successful, the notary node signs the transaction, which confirms the transaction and triggers the value transfer. Now let's take a look at the delivery versus payment process in action. We're logged into the SDX GUI as Bank One. Here we can see the tokenized asset holdings. The quantity of the digital bonds held is approximately 3 million. As none of these assets are reserved, they all appear as available. If we take a look at the cash holdings, we can see that Bank One has approximately 3.2 million of wholesale CBDC. None of this wholesale CBDC is reserved and is shown as available. Now let's move on to Bank Two. As you can see, we're now logged in the SDX GUI as Bank 2. Bank 2 has approximately 1 million of tokenized assets. Again, none of those assets are reserved and are shown as available. And Bank 2 has approximately 2 million of wholesale CBDC holdings. Again, none of this is reserved. Now let's look at how the transaction is initiated, starting with Bank 1. It creates a new settlement instruction. As Bank One is the seller of the tokenized assets, it's a delivery versus payment instruction. In the instruction, Bank One fills in the required parameters. This includes the counterparty, the asset type, the asset quantity, and the amount of wholesale CBDC. Here, Bank One sells 25 units of the digital bond against an amount of 1,000 wholesale CBDC implying a price per digital bond of 40 Swiss francs. Having entered all the parameters, the instruction is created. The delivery versus payment instruction is successfully saved, and the screen now shows the instruction details. The processing status is pending, and it's shown as unmatched. In the instruction status history, the status and the timestamp changes. The transaction has already passed received and accepted and is currently pending. Now let's move back to the SDX GUI of Bank 2. It now needs to enter the corresponding counter instruction, a receive versus payment instruction. Given that Bank 1 has entered the settlement instruction addressing Bank 2, Bank 2 can address it in the allegement section of the settlement instruction menu. Bank 2 only needs to amend and confirm the pre-filled parameters to make the counter instruction complete. By saving the completed instruction, the details and a confirmation of the successful entry of the settlement instruction are shown. This is the same information seen by Bank 1. Now let's take a look at the GUI of Bank 1. The instruction matching status has moved to matched and the processing status code has switched
from pending to settled. The holdings of Bank 1 show that tokenized asset holdings have decreased by 25 units and that wholesale CBDC holdings of Bank 1 increased by 1,000 Swiss francs. Now, moving back to the GUI of Bank 2, the status of the Receive versus Payment instruction has moved to Settled, with the same timestamp as the Delivery versus Payment instruction from Bank 1. We can see that Bank 2's tokenized asset holdings have increased by 25, and their wholesale CBDC holdings decreased by 1,000 Swiss francs. Now let's take a look at the Node Explorer. To gain some insight into the distributed ledger technology behind the GUI, we can make use of the Node Explorer. This is a tool offered by the Corda Technology Suite and allows us to see the Corda transactions a particular node is a participant of. Please note this is a technical view and will not be made available to the user. A Corda transaction is a proposal to update the ledger. A proposal only gets committed if the input states for a change of the ledger have not been consumed before, and if all the participants of the transaction sign the transaction. Here we can see all the quarter transactions where Bank 1 is a participant. While a settlement instruction moves through its different states, every state change represents a quarter transaction. This is the first state change stemming from the delivery versus payment transaction to the ledger which represents the acceptance of the instruction. This row shows when the transaction moved to pending. Since Bank 1 is also a participant of the Corda transactions related to the Receive versus Payment instruction of Bank 2, the Node Explorer of Bank 1 also shows the initialization of the Receive versus Payment instruction. And here we can see the matching of the two instructions, which is a shared Corda transaction. This row illustrates the state where the nodes request the notary to sign the movements of tokenized assets and wholesale CBDC. This shows the switch to the transaction status settled. And finally, the top row illustrates the update of the holdings of each bank. That's the successful completion of the use case delivery versus payment, tokenized assets versus wholesale CBDC.